Indeed, wasting zero time here. Hello, everybody. I'm Paulister, and this is The Pedestrian. It's a lovely, lovely little game uh, that I'm, I'm so excited to show to everybody here. Before we get started, for leaderboard validity purposes, and because I really like this intro, let's enjoy this intro here. Uh, so, a little bit about the game. The Pedestrian is a 2D puzzle platformer made by the lovely folks over at Skookum Arts. It's an absolutely nice game where we get to control the little person that is in the exit sign uh, that you see in various places. We're going to connect doors to doors, ladders to ladders, and we're going to make our way through this entire game, trying to escape our two-dimensional prison of sorts. So, as, uh, as uh, a million souls and consciousnesses, yes, materialize into one tiny speck, we are ready to go with our lovely run. So, my friends, we shall begin this run. Let me do one last shake of the hand to make sure I'm good to go. We're going to begin in three, two, one, a go. So we're going to move to the right, and we're going to pick the female character because that will actually allow us to do a little skip in just a moment. So we're just going to slowly walk to the end of this whiteboard. And now I just got to not forget the the way I hold the keys throughout this run. So, here's the main mechanic of the pedestrian. Connect two notes together, and that makes two signs uh, form a little path between them. Then we jump. Another main mechanic, super important, I'm sure. And now, I really love this segment, because if you do it perfectly at the start... Pedestrian. Really nice. Really nice. So, we're not going to waste much more time. We're going to proceed over here to this next puzzle. There we go. Just going to connect these doors over here. And we're going to have another puzzle. Same, same thing. Our first introduction to uh, doors and ladders. How very lovely. Now, this mechanic, we're only going to see this one time, but that sign at the bottom has iron bars around it. It means it cannot be moved. Um, in an all-levels run, this would have been shown a little bit more uh, thoroughly, but unfortunately, we're going to be doing lots of crazy skips here uh, to skip a lots and lots of puzzles, so we're only going to be seeing it so much here. So now we're going to drop down, use the key to the door. I don't think I need to explain how or why this works the way it does. So we're just going to proceed on to the very next puzzle, connecting these signs. Uh, one of the things I always like to be careful of here is uh, to make sure that the signs are not too awkward of an angle. Because if you do uh, put them at too awkward of an angle, the connection will be noted down, but it won't actually let you traverse the next sign over. Like that. I'm happy I was able to demonstrate that. So instead you have to kind of like shuffle it around just a little bit. We're then going to grab this lovely key over here, not drop down, that would be terrible. Uh, then we're going to buffer down to drop here. And uh, yeah, in just a moment, we're going to see buttons and switches happening. Uh, again, I don't think I need to explain how those will work. So, uh, Frozen Flygon, if you have a couple donations, then by all means, go right ahead. Oh, we have plenty of donations. And a lot of those donations are going towards that Metroid Dread incentive. So thank you so much. We have $250 from Smith saying, haven't had a chance to donate yet, but now's the perfect time. Let's hit that Metroid Dread incentive. I agree, if you haven't made your donation yet because you're waiting to the end, you're waiting for the finale, today's finale day, just get it in now. Lovely, thank you very much. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and, well, I'm gonna miss this cycle. I'm gonna lose a little bit of time. As you can tell, hands are a little bit cold. So kind of uh, not able to perform at my best, but hey, I hope this is satisfactory to say the least. I'm gonna jump into this elevator and then try and jump out of it as soon as I can so that we can uh, traverse these puzzles as quickly as possible. Here's a nice funky one with some, some signs over here. I'm gonna connect all of them. Usually the idea is to try and put them close enough that the path will form and it will let you through, but not too close that it will be an awkward angle blocking the, the entryway. And uh, yeah, if you do it close enough, you'll be able to just click on one thing and the rest of it will be just fine. So yeah, I'm just gonna connect that. Again, the whole awkward angles thing coming into effect. Gonna move these signs around because um, the uh, real life distance of these signs also determines the 
uh, travel time between them. So moving them closer together does help us save just a touch of time right here. So yeah, now in just a moment, we are going to proceed to this next section of the map and the end of the warehouse segment of this game. We're gonna grab this battery, take it into this modded Game Boy and pop it in to the top spot. This will be important. This will be useful later. For now, let's just call this elevator, uh, which marks perhaps one of the first iterations of an, with, uh, an element within the sign interacting with a real world element. We're gonna go down here. Lovely. Yes, uh, insert your favorite elevator music here as we wait to get into the subway section. Yes, indeed. We're gonna jump down here and we're gonna uh, be introduced to our very first danger of the run, which is the laser. You get hit by it, you die. So, don't, just don't, yeah. It'd be cool if you didn't. But yeah, let's proceed here with this lovely thing over here. Just gonna go pop, pop, there. Gonna connect these signs. And uh, you might have noticed already, but I'll just explain it for the heck of it. Um, if you overlap two signs with one another, then whichever one the character is on uh, will be on top. So if you manage to travel to one that is underneath another sign, then it will pop up to the surface. Now I'm gonna grab and ungrab this box a little bit to save just a touch of time by reintroducing the walking speed of our character here. So this next segment, I don't think I need to explain this. I'm gonna explain what comes in the very next sign, which is gonna be a key skip. It might not save me time, but I'll try it anyway. Okay, that's one try. So I think you can see what I'm trying to go for there. That's the key blocks the laser and we get it done, second try really chuffed with what I've been able to do here. So now, I'm gonna grab the battery and put it into this mini hub world and perform the puzzle on the bottom left. Now, there is a big skip that we're about to do, and so I hope you are excited for that. Give me a moment to connect these signs, there we go. Flick that lever, and then go jump, jump, hit that box, very nice, grab that key. We're doing amazing. And we're probably gonna catch the cycle. Oh yeah, no sweat. There it is. Gonna jump up here, grab this little coil. We're not gonna use it for its intended purpose for reasons that will become abundantly obvious in a little bit. But first, perhaps my favorite puzzle in the run because it allows me to commentate really, really quickly. So first I'm gonna hook up all of these signs right here. And now I'm gonna jump down this ladder first and foremost. We're gonna skip this button that activates the platform I'm jumping over. We're gonna grab the key and drop it into the platform. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Hit the button so that the laser, uh, the key blocks the laser so we can safely drop down here and not die. Disable the laser, grab the key and laugh like a madman as we finish this puzzle. Arctic, eat your heart out. <laughs> now I'm gonna do a big skip here. Over here, we're gonna grab this little coil, drop it on there. And then we're gonna grab this battery, drop that in as well. And there we go, we're gonna jump in and then I'm gonna Alt F4. I said Alt F. Oh. There we go. Just gonna do that real quick and then press play again. And that should boot up the game. It did, <laughs> there we go. It's gonna fix up something on the back end here. But yeah, it should be working, hopefully. Yes, it is, and we have skipped an entire puzzle. Wow. Yes. <laughs> That's an entire puzzle done just by resetting the game, easy. So now, one final section here in the subway, like so. And then I'm just gonna drop this box here push it a little bit further. And now we're gonna do one uh, big section skip. We're gonna skip entire sections with this. Basically, if I do 772, oh, come on. And there we go. Uh, now, normally this game will give you a code on that clipboard over there. Um, that's not 772, it's a different code. 772 is the code for the last stop of the train. So we skip like, I think four or five sections of this game. So that is uh, lovely and amazing and incredible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this mechanic, uh, which we're gonna see only once. So yeah, there we go, I did it right. 
Um, and I'm going to do the whole password thing one more time in just a moment, uh, so long as I don't die. Uh, so yeah, in the meantime, Frozen Flygon, we have time for like two, three donations, so go for it. That is wonderful and amazing and awesome. We have $100 from Sprout saying, jumping on the Metroid airboat. Yes, let's keep it going. Great job, everyone. We're almost at 14,000 out of 50,000. I'm seeing that number climb every time I refresh. So keep those donations going and assign it to Metroid. We have $50 from SpaceCat727 saying, long time watcher, first time donator. Here's some more tickets to the airboat for those who need a spot. Good luck on the runs and let's keep GDQ going. I also have $200 from Hepinwana, uh, the previous runner, saying, thanks for letting Charbunny, Paulster, Zet, and I share the love. Let's go, Paulster, with the pedestrian. A lovely. Thank you for the generous donations there. Incredible. Let's get that Metroid Dread incentive met. So we're going to, as you can see, we have done something really uh, uh, funky here. One second. The cold hands are really coming into effect. Yes, that's my excuse. Uh, we're going to jump into this Game Boy now, which is now our transport vessel for the last two puzzles of this run. This is how we liberate ourselves from signs and we move on to the real world. We're going to traverse through these bridges. Now pay close attention. There's four skyscrapers here, four blueprints on this sign. How very curious. I'm going to connect these two here, like so. Going to move this box. Again, doing the grab on grab, and then FE to escape from the sign view. And then our uh, human counterpart is gonna move around. How very curious. There's a wet floor sign and a box of a box. Huh. I wonder what happens if I move that just a little bit further up in that building. And you can probably already surmise what's gonna happen. That box is gonna move a bit further up, like so. So yeah, we can now use that as a stepping stone to reach the top of this blueprint, advance to the next one, uh, come up here, and then right like so, jump down, hit that. We're going to do a very nice key pass there. Going to grab the key, and then emit jump, FE, out of uh, the sign view, head back to where the box is. Very lovely. And then boop, grab the box. We're going to need it. And we're going to jump up. Well, jump. We don't have a jump, unfortunately, in uh, the human form. So we're just going to bring this box here. We're going to drop it down as soon as we can. Grab the key and then grab the box. Drop it down there. Oh, I don't think I've ever done that any cleaner. Lovely, lovely stuff. Then we're going to jump into the sign and then hit this. Grab the key. And then finally, unlock this door, which leads us to our apartment for the very last puzzle of the game. We're going to be doing lots of real world stuff here. How very nice. And then we're just, we're just going to wait for this door to open. Not very many seconds uh, left here in this run. So just this puzzle to go. All right. And then turn around. Turn around. <laughs> there we go. Grab the floppy disk, put it on the PC, hit the button here connect these two things and then go down grab the key from behind the carpet i mean the uh the little post-it note and this little tunnel is the last tunnel of the run so thank you all very much for watching i hope you all enjoyed this run i sure certainly had a lot of fun doing my two showcases for gdq so yeah get ready on time time great job awesome run that was very nice i was i was happy to get things uh first try there so I can showcase everything in a nice, timely manner. Uh, what was my final time, by the way? Looks like uh, 12.31 was the final time. What? Yeah. <laughs> Brad's at least That's a three-second like... PB. What? Yes. I was like, that was fast. <laughs> Great job. Well, that was incredible. That was absolutely amazing. Uh, OK, I, I had a whole ending segment. Now I'm just like, OK. All right, you be a GDQ <laughs> casually, you know, because we're good like that. Um, but yeah, so a few minor shout outs here. So shout outs to Riker for uh, showing me some of these tricks. I wouldn't have been able to get that subway skip uh, without looking at his world record and getting some of his advice. Um, shout outs to the rest of the community for uh, being absolutely amazing and just uh, cheering me up. 
everybody that has wished me good luck th for these two showcases. Thank you very much. Your, your energy has really helped me carry this to the very end. Um, and yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you all very much. I, I hope I did you all proud. Now, with that being said, um, I do have a birthday dinner to tend to, and I'm almost going to be very, very late. So I'm going to pass it straight back to Frozen Flygon. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you want more stuff, twitch.tv slash Paulister. That's the place to be. But yeah, thank you very much. Keep watching GDQ. Keep donating. Goodbye. Fantastic job, Pulsar, with those back-to-back -back participation in the Love 3 and then the pedestrian runs. I was entranced the whole time. Wow, chat. I'm so proud of y'all's progress on the Metro Dread Incentive. And uh, I got a special one to shout out that's gone towards that. We have $10,000 from DK Salfo. Oh, my goodness. And it says, another Metro Incentive? Don't mind if I do. We're about halfway there, guys. And that's true. We're now with that generous donation, almost at 25,000 out of 50,000. Believers, we got to make this happen. Get your donations in now. Like I said, we only have until the first 20 minutes of the run. So we don't want that, you know, let's, let's make it happen. We can do this. While you all are putting your donations in, we're going to be right back.
Welcome back, everyone, to AGDQ 2023. It's been a fantastic day of speedruns already, but it's the final day. I'm not ready for it to end. But we've got $25 from one true Gerbot saying, congrats on the pedestrian PB Pulsar. Let's get that Metroid Dread incentive. And I completely agree. Before we get into the next run, just have a quick word from one of our sponsors, Running With Speed. Running With Speed is the definitive speedrun documentary narrated by, you know, YouTuber Summoning Saul. All those world record videos we love to watch and listen to features the world's top speedrunners and the GDQ community. Uh, during the event, $1 per purchase goes to the charity. And so make sure you check it out at runningwithspeed.com. And right now, actually... You can donate, if you donate $50 or more, you'll be entered into win the Running With Speed posters, the signed posters, the posters and the signed NES. And the NES is signed by people such as have been featured at this marathon, like Sky Bills and Mitch Flower Power, who's going to be doing the finale. So thank you so much to Running With Speed for sponsoring us and donating that awesome prize. We have $5 from Anonymous saying, I dread an incentive we don't meet. Okay, okay, I'll give you that one. We have $25 from Jason L. Long time watcher. Glad to be able to give back to this great event. Shout outs to all the runners, staff, donators, and viewers for making this such a great event. I love you all less than three. We have $25 from Zet who said, Hello, Paulister. Great to see you playing this game again. I imagine the swerves and some of the levels are quite hard. Great love three race earlier, putting this towards the Metroid Dread incentive. Thank you so much, Zet. The pedestrian just flew by since it was a PB. Wasn't able to read that during the run, but wanted to make sure Paulister knew you donated for that. All right. I'm getting word that we are about ready for our next interview. So take it away, interview team. Thank you so much, Court. I'm Jay Obs, and I'm joined by Habu, who's going to be running Ferraria for us in just a little bit. Habu, how are you doing? I am doing good this Saturday afternoon, last day. Prime time yes. for Ferraria spot. I couldn't be more happy. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I'm looking forward to this run a lot. I think it's going to be super fun. Uh, and I want to get into what category you're playing first, uh, because Terraria is a game that I feel like could have endless numbers of categories for it, kind of like Minecraft. So uh, what what are you going to be running for us today? I'm going to be running basically the any percent category for the game. It is Moon Lord, no major abuses. The goal is to just kill the final boss as fast as possible using not so major abuses uh the category's name is a little outdated it was mainly designed back for when the game was in 1.3 when there was a bunch of duplication bugs invincibility machines stuff like that nowadays it's more just to keep a few rare dupes that can still happen a few in invincibility machines that are still present and uh no hoiking which is a weird mechanic in the game but we are still going to be seeing some fantastic creative strategies, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in order to take out bosses very quickly. Yes, there's some very unique builds to cheese some of the bosses and some new 1.4 or 0.4 builds. Uh, the new current patch is actually the fastest somehow, unlike most uh, sandbox games. Yeah, that's something I actually wanted to get into next was uh, you, you, we were talking about it before we started the interview and you were saying, yeah, this, there was this new patch like pretty recently and it saves like a lot of time. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit? So I submitted for GDQ with uh, an older patch, which was 1.4.3. And then while it was, while they were vetting runs to get in, a new major patch for Chari come came out. People know it is the Heart of Brave update or patch 1.4.4. They added a few new things and buffed two particular things that I'm not going to go into detail until the run. I want to keep, keep it a little bit of a surprise. But those two things combined basically break a lot of bosses in terms of the amount of DPS you can output on them. Mm, okay. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really curious what those two things are. You've left, left us in suspense a bit here. <laughs> left, left us in some <laughs> mystery. So what got you into running Terraria? Because I think this is a game that not everybody would really associate with speedrunning 
first off. It's like a weird crafting, but also combat, but also exploration and mining kind of game. Uh, what, why, why speed run it? Uh, I have had a habit of speedrunning just my all-time favorite games. I have owned Terraria since its release date, I believe back in like 2011. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's it's an old game. So, once I started getting into speedrunning more and more, I'm like, eh, I wonder if there's a Terraria speedrunning scene. And I eventually got into it once the original 1.4 patch dropped, and I've been speedrunning it on and off ever since. <laughs> Gotta love it. I mean, that's that's always a good way to go, right? If people ask, well, what game should I play to get into speedrunning? It's like just speedrun your favorite game. Just play play your play the game that you can play for hours on end. What does the training for this run look like though? Is it just boot up a new random seed and just go from start to finish every time because you never know what the RNG is gonna be like? Or that's you do it? <laughs> yeah, not not a lot of resetting uh, for you. Yeah, you can get completely screwed, which uh <laughs> <laughs> can't happen, but as long as I play well and I know the decent backups or know how the world generates, I should be fine. Do you do you find yourself preparing like a lot of backup strategies, or is it mostly just like uh, everything just got to kind of click into place? Uh, it really depends on how the run's going. Uh, sometimes you have some items, sometimes you don't. Sometimes uh, the world generation allows for the strategy. Sometimes it doesn't. It really, you, it's really just a memorization game of. How many different strategies do you know? Right. How many different strategies can you pull off? Because not every single run is going to be the exact same cookie cutter mold like most other games. It's mm -hmm. how much on-the-fly like, routing can you do? Almost like a flow chart in your head of just like, yeah. if I get this, I go and do this. If I get this, I do this, right? Yeah. And, then, and continuing to branch off from there. Well, we do have uh, some social media questions for this interview as well, and I wanted to get into one of them. Um, Somebody said, funny question, but when you start a casual playthrough, is the first thing you do create a mud wall so the zombies just jump on top of you all right? I I I I'm I'm didn't know if this was like a specific reference to the speedrun strategy or if this is just off the wall going like, nope, I gotta do something else. Uh casually, I am generally print I if I play this game casually, it's with a group of IRL friends at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Uh but no, if I'm speedrunning, <laughs> I'm making the houses in the air. They're floating like they shouldn't be, and then casually, I try to I try to decorate. I wouldn't say okay. I'm the best at it. There's some <laughs> really good Terraria builders out there, but I, fair, I can make fair. I can make a non box house. Yeah, contrary yeah, to uh, what my chat may make you believe. I was gonna say I don't know if we'll believe you after the run, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, those uh, those NPCs are gonna be in prison cells. Uh, oh, and I did forget to say that that uh, came to us from at uh, Ticey Hayuga. I apologize if I mispronounce your name, but uh, yeah. Uh, so if anybody wanted to get into speedrunning Terraria, do you think they should just jump in with any percent or is there a different category? What kind of advice would you give uh, to folks there, who want to jump in? There are a lot shorter categories, specifically like Knight's Edge. It's just to craft the early game or the best sword in the first half of the game. There's individual bosses for like easier ones. Skeletron is a good example. Uh, Brain Cthulhu is a good one. Uh, Queen Bee, all, all of these. So it's like you can pick and choose. If you want resources, I think as every other speedrun, you just got to go to the speedrun.com page, look up the Terraria speedruns, and there should be a link to the Discord in or on the links page, and then you can join the Terraria SP running Discord, and we are more than happy to help you get into running. Very cool, very cool. And last question for you here, Habu. You mentioned that you're going to have some really fun new strategies for some of these uh, these fights and for this run. But if you had to pick one boss that people should be tuning in for, or one moment in the run even, uh, what should they be watching for? Uh, I really, I might be biased because I've uh, I figured out the setup, but the new Plantera fight is definitely a watch. If you blink, you'll miss it. It is a very unique experience, to put it, to put it simply. Okay, okay. Plantera is a name I remember, and I haven't played this game in like seven or eight years or something. So I'm <laughs> definitely a notorious one. Uh, well, thank you, Habu, so much for joining me for the interview. I wish you the best of luck on your run. Thank you. All right, folks, we are going to get back to the speedruns with AGDQ 2023 Online continuing in its final day.
Metroid Dread, and we have an incentive that we that still needs a little bit. Got it. What's going on? Awesome games done quick 2023 online. My name is Conception. I'm taking over hosting duties for the ever impressive Frozen Flygon. She is quite literally doing it all at this event. Be sure to give her some love in the chat. But uh, we are getting set up here for Metroid Dread. And in case you aren't aware, we have an incentive open to uh, to ever ex ever so extend this Metroid Dread run. So that is going to be the Parrying and Crate Shift Showcase. Now, currently, that is a $50,000 goal. We're just shy of $30,000. So we're about $20,000 away. And that incentive will need to close roughly about 20 minutes into the run. So if you want to see what that is, because I don't even know what that is, to be honest, be sure to get your donations in right away. Just like, let's see here, we have so many. Just like... Slamscape, who donated $25, saying, I love watching AGQ every year. Metroid Dread is an amazing game and one of the few that I've attempted to speedrun. Let's get that Metroid Dread incentive. Absolutely. Also want to read this $50 donation from Nyx, who said, get that Metroid Showcase met. Anything else would be dreadful or dread less? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. All right, we also have a $1,000 donation from Devin here, who says, always have loved watching GDQ in the past. Now I am thankful I can donate to give back to the amazing cause and event. Bardic Feline also writing in with $25 saying, GDQ hype! This is for the Metroid Dread incentive. I have no idea what a crate shift is, and I definitely want to see it. Uh, yeah, a big agree, a big agree, Bardic Feline. But uh, great news for everybody out there. The the dread time is upon us. Metroid, dread, glitchless, all bosses race, and that's going to be Ednolium and Manager showing us how it's done. It's all yours.